Dear children, before we begin this class, let us start with a small prayer. Let us stand up and recite the prayer shown on the screen. We thank you, Lord Almighty, for having brought us together in this Carison class to study and pray and also to know and understand the divine revelations that God has prepared for us. We submit ourselves before the fellowship of the Most Holy Trinity. We pray along with the psalmist, It is you who light my lamp, the Lord my God lights up my darkness. O oh, Jesus, who shines as the everlasting light in our lives, we pray to you to preserve us under your mighty protection in all our deeds of this year. Mother Mary, who strengthened your son during his times of suffering, intercede for us. Reconciliation, then the right of fraction, which is also called the breaking of the bread. Then we have the communion service and the concluding service. So in today's class, I will discuss about the right of reconciliation and the right of fraction. That is breaking of the bread. Okay. So the fifth and sixth part of the holy kurbana will be discussed today's in today's class. And the final two parts, that is the communion service and the concluding service, will be discussed in our next class. In our next class, meaning on next Sunday, that is on September 13th. Lesson 7 starts with the parable of the prodigal son. I hope you all remember the parable. If not, kindly read it from the Gospel of St. Luke chapter 15 verses 1 to 24. Now in the parable of the prodigal son, it is mentioned about the return of the repentant son. So forgetting everything, the father receives the repentant son and he is given again the title of sonship. Now to signify this, he was given a bath, robed in the best dress and a ring was put on his finger. There was a banquet arranged to honor him and all rejoiced at his return. My dear young brothers and sisters, God has sent his son to redeem sinful man who went astray from him. So Jesus sacrificed himself and redeemed mankind. He arranged an eternal banquet for man and fed him with his own body and blood. And therefore, he invites us to enjoy this banquet in every holy kurbana, so that we become one with Jesus when we eat his body and drink his blood in the holy kurbana, and thus become inheritors of the salvation secured for us. Right of Reconciliation As the prodigal son was robed with the best dress, so do we are called to adorn with the sacred robe of reconciliation which is in preparation to the Holy Communion or to the banquet that is prepared for us by Jesus by giving or sharing his body and blood. 
So the rite of reconciliation prior to receiving the Holy Communion helps us unite ourselves with God. The rite of reconciliation starts with a private prayer by the celebrant. And the prayer is, O Christ, you are the peace of the heavenly court and the hope of the earthly beings. Bring peace and harmony to the world, especially to the Holy Catholic Church. Preserve the church and the nation in harmony. Banish wars from the face of the earth. Scatter the warmongers from our midst. Grant that we may lead a humble and God-fearing life in peace and tranquility. Let there be glory not to us, Lord, but to your holy name. Now this is a private prayer recited by the celebrant. So followed by the private prayer, we have penitential psalm, also called the psalm of repentance, under which the celebrant stands erect and says, Have mercy on me, O God, in your loving kindness. In response, the community says, In your great compassion, wipe away my sins. And then after the penitential psalm, we have incensing. So at this time, the deacon brings censer and incense to the celebrant. The celebrant blesses the frankincense while saying the following prayer. Lord of fragrance and spices, may this incense and our prayers be pleasing to you, just as the incense that Aaron, the high priest, offered you in the tent of the Ark of the Covenant. Found favor in your presence, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all, forever. Now here the celebrant stretches his hands towards the deacon, while the deacon incenses the celebrant's hands, the celebrant says in a low voice, O God our Lord, O Lord our God, wash me from my iniquities and fill me with the divine fragrance of your love. O Good Shepherd, who searched and found us who were lost. Then after this private prayer, the celebrant the crosses his hands across his chest and says, Forgive me all my sins and offenses, known and unknown to me. Then the celebrant raises his right hand over the deacon and says, Lord our God, fill with fragrance this deacon who stands in front of your glorious and sacred altar. After this, the celebrant prays, stretching his hand over the congregation. Lord our God, fill with fragrance this assembly that is awaiting your mercy with hope. Then later the celebrant prays, stretching his hand over the altar. Lord our God, fill with fragrance the propitiatory body and blood of Christ and this altar, your throne and image of the holy sepulchre of Jesus Christ. Now this incensing, the incensing at this juncture leads us to forgiveness of sins. The incensing at this juncture leads us to the forgiveness of our sins. Followed by the incensing, we have prayer of mercy. At this time, the celebrant raises his hands and says, Bless us, O Lord, may your mercy draw us near to these glorious, sacred, life-giving and divine mysteries, though truly we are unworthy. After that is a prayer of elevation. So the celebrant kisses the altar with his hands held to his chest in the form of the cross. He raises the host and says, O Lord Jesus Christ, may there be glory to your name and worship to your majesty. Forever. For this life, living and life giving bread has come down from heaven and gives life to the whole world. Whoever eats this bread will not die but will receive re emission of sins, attain salvation, and live forever. After the prayer of elevation, thus starts the next part of the Holy Kurbana that is the rite of fraction, also called as breaking of the bread. Now during this part, the community sings a hymn and the living bread which came down from heaven. So that's the hymn which is sung by Deacon as well as by the community. 
During this time, the celebrant says the following prayer in a low voice. So there is a private prayer for the celebrant at this time. And that is, Lord our God, we approach the sacred mysteries with true faith in your name. Through your great favor and mercy, we break and sign the body and blood of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit forever. Then the celebrant divides the host in two and he signs the chalice with a broken host in his right hand and he says, The precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is signed with his life-giving body. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Then later the celebrant signs the half of the host on the patent with the half of the host in his right hand. And as he does that, the celebrant says, The sacred body of our Lord Jesus Christ is signed with his propitiatory blood. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Now holding both pieces of the divided host together over the chalice, the celebrant says, these glorious life-giving, holy and divine mysteries have been set apart, sanctified, perfected, commingled and united with each other in the adorable and exalted name of the most glorious Trinity, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord our God, through these holy mysteries, may the Holy Church here and everywhere and all of us obtain re-emission of debts, forgiveness of sins, hope for resurrection and new life in the kingdom of heaven now always and forever after this the celebrant places the two halves on the patent one upon the other crosswise so that the broken end of the particle below faces the chalice and the particle above the priest then he bows and with his right thumb makes the sign of the cross on his forehead then he unfolds the shoshapa which is wrapped around the sacred mysteries and says, Praise to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for although I am unworthy, in your mercy you ordain me the minister and mediator of these glorious, life-giving, holy and divine mysteries. By your grace make me worthy for the re-emission of debts and forgiveness of sins. Amen. Now here we can see that the celebrant unfolds the Shoshapa. Now why does he do that? It is to signify that the Christ has resurrected. Now this rite of fraction that follows reveals the Holy Kurbana's characteristic power to absorb sins. So the sacred body and blood of Jesus sacrificed for the expiation of our sins is being adored, adored over here. Followed by the rite of fraction, that is breaking of the bread, we have Pauline greeting. Okay, so at this time the celebrant bows and says the following prayer in a loud voice. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now, always and forever. In response, community says Amen. At this time the celebrant signs himself. Now why it is called Paul and Greeking? It is because Saint Paul has given this salutation for the first time. Followed by the Paul and Greeting is an invitation to reconciliation. That is the Karasuta of reconciliation. So at this time the deacon says, Let us approach the mysteries of the precious body and blood of our Saviour with reverence and respect. With the hope arising from repentance, let us turn away from wrongdoing, repent our sins and forgive the trespasses of our brothers and sisters. Let us pray to God, the Lord of all, for mercy and forgiveness. So this is the announcement that is made by the deacon. Now this reminds us of how we must prepare to receive Holy Communion and what are the benefits thereof. Followed by the announcement, we have penitential litany. So in this penitential litany, a few preparatory requisites to receive Holy Communion are exhorted. And they are, make your conscience clear, avoid spite for others, keep away from quarrel, dispense with enmity, 
get rid of ill will, be in harmony with everyone, keep the spirit of love and be pious. Okay. So these are the preparatory measures to be followed to receive Holy Communion. Now it's time to answer question. The first question is, the prayers of the reconciliation rite grants forgiveness of sins. What is the meaning of this statement? Your second question, what preparatory requisites are essential to receive the Holy Communion as exalted in the Karasutta prayer? Now here you have a word of God to read and meditate. Kindly read from the Gospel of St. John chapter 6 verses 48 to 59. So here we have studied the fifth and sixth part of the Holy Kubana that is the rite of reconciliation and breaking of the bread. Now the next two parts, the final two parts that is the Holy Communion service and the concluding service. We shall study it on next Sunday that is on September 30. Let us end the class by thanking God for giving us this wonderful opportunity. Let us stand and recite the prayer shown on the screen. O merciful Lord, we thank you for having sent forth upon us your wisdom from the holy heavens, from the throne of your glory. Thank you for having chosen us to be the shining lamps of the world by eliminating darkness and spreading light. O oh Jesus, you said, it is not the will of my heavenly Father that one of these little ones should be lost. We thankfully join our hands before you for holding all of us to your bosom. Following the example of Mother Mary, who readily accepted to be the handmaid of the Lord, we too pray that we may be strengthened to do God's will in every walk of our life.